everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is all about design. We are doing and selecting quite a bit and I'm so excited because this is what I have been waiting for. I have not started any of the design process or really even thought about too much of it because I've been wanting to do it with you guys. As you know, I already talked about that. And what you've already seen, oh, and by the way, I don't have an update on the plumbing situation yet. I know that I shared that with you guys recently, but it is my birthday today, the 24th, and I'm just over at the house enjoying the design process. That's what I wanted to do. I did read so many of your guys' comments saying that I should move in and live with this space for a year before making any changes. But to be honest, um, that's just not me. Like, that's just not me. I have some ideas. I want to make some changes before I move in because I do want to refinish the floors potentially. I want to do a little bit of renovations and I'd like to do that before I have stuff in here. What I'm kind of leaning towards at the moment is actually arching this wall here. So arching all the way over and creating a big like arched opening that will look into kind of like the coffee bar area and then keeping both of these side walls here to kind of section it into its own dining room. That is my current plan. Right over on this wall here with this really tiny flat door, I want to do an arched opening here as well. That way it can look right into the breakfast nook. There's no need for these doors. I can do some sort of built-in breakfast nook situation. And then work-wise, I don't think this is a humongous undertaking as opposed to removing all three of the walls because if I did remove all three of the walls too, I'd have to figure out how to reposition the stove and I'd also have to figure out the wall that is connecting the kitchen and breakfast nook that is kind of not seen in this at the moment. So here's a skylight. Now I... Do not love the glass that is in there. I'll pop up a close-up so you guys can see. It's just like this like tie-dyed, I don't know if it's Murano glass or exactly what it is, but I do want to replace it. It is not my vibe at all, and I actually don't think it's original either. You can kind of tell the edges. Wait, what? I can make this skylight moment so much more of a statement and pull it back like all the way to here-ish and then have it come all the way down to the bedrooms right around here. And in my head, I have this like paneled glass situation. I'll pop up some photos if I can find any. And I feel like if I just widened this and made this into like a glass hallway ceiling, that would be so epic. I don't know exactly if I can, but it's something I want to bring up to Balloon and I think that that's I'm an option. I'm going to draw and sketch something out as well for this area. I also realized that I have yet to share with you guys my Pinterest mood board. So this is my new house mood board. I'll probably end up breaking it into like a couple different sections later on, but at the moment I'm just kind of combining everything to get my general concepts together. But as you could see, I definitely want to go earthy, kind of in color tone, but I also want to go pretty bold in some sections as well. Like I think we can have a lot of fun with tile work. A lot of Spanish homes have really, really bold and, you know, interesting tile kind of like like this here and so I want to make sure that I implement a lot of that and my design style lately has been kind of leaning really bold as well I absolutely love these little kind of cross tiles in this bathroom here some pins are kind of more focusing on specific elements like I love the flooring in this one and then especially in this one as well I like how they did this kind of diamond flooring that then transfers into this square terracotta flooring up here thought that was pretty interesting so I will make sure to link this mood board below for you guys and then this right here is what I was talking about in reference to the skylight. So kind of like a vaulted, just more focal skylight situation that could have some sort of stained glass in it. There was another photo I believe in here that had, oh, this one right here. So pretty with the stained glass, like how fun would that be? But yes, I'm just kind of collecting a lot of ideas, fixtures, textures, applications, fabrications, whatever it might be, and adding them to my Pinterest board. 
Good morning, everybody. I am headed to Floor and Decor. Marie's with me, too. Hi. We're heading to Floor and Decor right now, which is a tile shop. I've only been there once before when I did those uh, DIY nightstands for... This better not break. You guys, I have broken this vlog camera so many times you don't even know. We are headed to Floor and Decor right now and I'll see you guys when we get there. I just wanna get some more tile samples. I'm checking out all of the tile options and this is a humongous like warehouse size store of just different floor and decor. There's lots of options here so I'm gonna share with you guys more towards the end or if I find anything that I come across that I like. So you don't look into the, open the big kitchen and all that wall, right? I don't think so. So three things you're gonna do. One, and the second floor with the skylight, you drew like a uh, excess. What is gonna be? Oh, okay, so with the skylight situation, I really want to like, e like make it a lot longer. There's another probably four feet that it can go over to the bedroom area. Okay, so let me, let me do this. I don't, I, I'm trying to explain to you how it's work. Because you open more than two by two opening, it's two by four skylight. You have to go through engineering and city approval if somebody fell in. So it has to be a structural open. Okay, got it. So stain, stained glass, they are not structural. They're non structural. They're just a design. So you have to design first structurally, call the engineer, pull permits from the city for liability and for, you know, something happened to somebody. It's a roof. So I highly recommend you don't, don't touch it. Oh man, no, okay. No. <laughs> okay, so nothing I'm with the sorry, skylight. I, mean, I know you, what you want. I know what you want. The header beam. You have to have a header beam above the arch. Got it. Okay. After that, you can further out whatever you want. You can add to it, you can square it out, you can do whatever you want. Yes. So we have to fix the floors. You can have a six inches of damaged floor. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Which, I wonder if we could pull that out of the closet. I'll send you a bit and uh, take a look, and if you have any questions, we take it from there. This one, I don't need permits, I don't need to involve the city. It's all in, nothing major. And then like, uh, if I... So if it's a three arches, I can start, I mean, um, in the next few days. No city involved, no permits, no nothing. It's a get in and get oh, out. Oh yeah, you know? that's perfect. Perfect, so then give me a day or two, I will send you the bid. And if you're ready to go, we're gonna start three arches though. Okay. I need three arches, not perfect. This. only thing i found in the entire store was this tile sample here it's a brick on a mesh but it's really pretty i actually like the rustic look of the brick and i feel like it looks pretty like handmade as well made it to the second location guys this is stoneland in north hollywood i literally just googled marble slabs and this looked like the largest one so that's why i'm here this is a crazy look how big this is Wait, how many slabs do you think there are in here? 30,000. Countertops, bathroom countertops. Some book matched marble. You guys, I'm so overwhelmed in here. So here we have Calcutta Viola, which I believe is like one of the most expensive marbles. It's so pretty though, it has the chunky veining and it has like some of these rusty tones in the veining as well and then some warm tones. Someone's bought in this one, but look how pretty this marble is. This one here is called Calcutta Monet and it looks like it has these really pretty dark brown and like foresty green accents in there. Oh, Marie, it's beautiful. That's so funny. Wow, you guys, look how beautiful this one is. It's called a bronze fantasy, but it's like a dark black with a bronzy color in it. It's so pretty. <laughs> it looks like a painting. Like this literally looks like a Van Gogh painting. Or it something. literally does. Look at that. <laughs> that is crazy. Look at how this stone plays. This is cool. I feel like I'm in an airport right now. It literally goes across the entire ceiling to go and get the stone. That is crazy. This is so fun. I feel like I'm like a child, like an adult amusement park. Look at all of this. Leaving Stoneland, it was amazing, you guys. The lady in there was incredible. I got so many swatches too. Uh, it was just great. I'm super excited. We 
have an exciting package, guys. I got this this morning. It is from Samplies. They actually sell paint swatch samples from like your favorite brands that you could reuse and put on the wall. So I got a bunch of different, I think like mainly white tones. I might've gotten a couple of colors. Yeah, I got like a few colors, mainly white. I'm gonna move the camera a little bit so we can see some of the trim, like the white trim. This is Faro and Ball Schoolhouse White. This is the one I use throughout my entire apartment, which is Chantilly Lace by Benjamin Moore. swatches on the wall and as you can see each of them kind of have a different undertone to them and I'm sure on camera they're kind of coming across a little bit different than in person as well. I definitely know this one's out of the picture way too dark for a white because I want to find something that's pretty universal that I can use throughout the entire place as a white option. After looking at these colors again guys I actually am kind of liking this Oxford white one. The Benjamin Moore Oxford white. You can definitely see the tone variation in the hallway a lot more in the living room. So you can kind of see the undertones a bit more here. From what I can see looking in the camera, I'm kind of leaning a bit more towards these, no, these ones, these left two right here, Chantilly Lace and Oxford White. I like the Oxford White and that's the color that I was kind of leaning more towards in the living room as well. I do quite like this one too, White Dove. White Dove looks nice. Something I will also say is that this hallway wall color is like the slightest bit of a green tone. So this is White Dove next to Oxford White. Just a slight bit darker. I'm gonna actually ask you guys on Instagram. Okay, so here are the paint swatches in the hallway, which is definitely, I'm in the upper living room, and this one should be a little more interesting because the walls in here are actually like already a creamy yellow color. This is actually kind of challenging because the living room downstairs is blue, and that's gonna shift the colors for sure, and the living room upstairs is yellow, like a yellowy tone. So the tones on the wall definitely appear different in all the spaces that we're looking at. Like these are definitely too dark. And I will also say, you know, I might even paint this living room like a dark color. Like that's also an option, but I do want to go through and do like a light coat on everything. I don't know what I'm doing yet. So I just want to put something on the wall with you guys. <laughs> So yes, we have Oxford White on the left, Chantilly Lace, and then we have Benjamin Moore Swiss Coffee, Alabaster by Sherwin-Williams, Benjamin Moore's Dove Wing. This is a schoolhouse color from Pharaoh and Ball, and then the last one is Benjamin Moore's White Dove, which is also really pretty as well. Well, I found this stool, and I wanna figure out what this glass is, so I wanna go ahead and yeah. go up there, right? Yeah. Wait, what? What is it? What the heck? I can take it out. Is there a light in there? Wait, I'm confused. I just took the glass out of the skylight. What? <laughs> It's a nice, oh my gosh, it's like an actual skylight above it. Wait, is it a light? There's an outlet. Oh my gosh, there's a light in there too. I am so confused. I always wonder how they were able to get this light in here like this. I'm just kind of curious. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh, it is getting so bright in here. Ew, there's dust. Mouth. There's dust in my mouth and eyes. Look at this, you guys. I have got to show you how much brighter the hallway currently is when I opened up that skylight. Oh my gosh, you guys. This was like probably one of the more darker hallways, and it is so bright now, but it's honestly like too bright. 
It looks like there's a light on in the hallway. I was able to remove the glass from there, which is all currently right here. Definitely gonna be keeping that. I'll probably just pop it in here for the time being. But I wanna figure out maybe if there's a different type of glass I could put in here. And then the light fixture I can also swap out if I wanna do that as well. I've discovered something. So first off, guys, I don't know if you knew, but this is the original wood in the closet. This is the only closet that has the original wood. I never shared this, but over here, look what I found. I found the off cuts of the glass. So this definitely was wasn't original they probably bought like a sheet of glass and then had it cut for the skylight and these are the off cuts of the glass so I don't feel too bad about potentially replacing it but of course I'm keeping the glass pieces opening the skylight also made my bathroom so much brighter because the only light source in here are these two windows and then basically what's right behind which happens to be the skylight I'm gonna head out and get a coffee quickly and then I'm gonna come back I actually want to sit with the paint swatches like for the full day to get an Deal. Like, look how orangey the color is. This is a bounce back from the unit. So this definitely needs to be painted a white tone for sure. But I also want to stop by Lowe's and get a couple of these little bullseye rosette square motifs that I might want to add to some of the trim. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, if you have never tried the grilled cheese from Starbucks, it is, it's like unreal. Like it is the best grilled cheese ever. I don't know what they put in it, but... I mean, it's probably just cheese and bread, but they have really good cheese and bread. Pulled up at Lowe's, and then I got a call from the thrift store that I went to two weeks ago that they are there delivering my furniture that I got. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram, you definitely need to because that's where I ask you like a lot of my in the moment question. So I was thrifting last week and I found a couple pieces of really cool furniture, which you're gonna see in just a minute here because I'm gonna go get it right now. Look what came, the huge hutch that I got at the thrift store. It is so heavy, Marie, and I just tried bringing it inside. Um, impossible. Impossible, I don't really know what we're gonna do. So it's gonna stay here for the time being. So I am back from Lowe's and I found what I needed there. I forgot to bring in my vlog camera, but um, I got what I needed. So I ended up actually grabbing a couple of these. These are called Bullseye Rosettes. And as you can see on the wall here, we have Bullseye Rosettes. These are probably authentic to the home and they're just kind of like little motifs on the doors and we have them on the closet doors. And what I'm actually thinking of doing with these is cutting out the corner trim on all of the doors and actually adding one of these to the edge, just like that for a little bit more character and detail. Oh, imagine how pretty it would look on the corners of the windows. We could even do it down here as well. I've seen people do that too. Or like maybe above? I don't know, something to think about. kitchen guys because in here we are renovating like everything now of course I'm gonna be keeping the cabinetry because it's brand new and I love it it's actually really really pretty they did a great job with it however I don't know why they stuck these floor tiles on the wall and did the same exact like brick style tiles over here and some of them are shorter than the tiles are supposed to be I'm very confused on who did this kitchen but we are gonna be removing all of this all the backsplash all the countertops I hate and despise the countertops. They have flecks of glitter in them. 
it's an absolute no for me. So I've been ordering some samples of tile online and I ordered from Zia Tile and I also ordered from Clay Tile. Now I got two floor tile options so far. So I got just like a basic 12 by 12 terracotta, but this terracotta in particular is so orange. Like it is just, as you can see, bright orange. This one's from Zia Tile. It's the Fired Earth 13 by 13, but I'm looking more for something kind of like, I guess this is more of a, terracotta that I'm going for, more of a reddish deep tone, and I just don't like this floor tile color. Now this tile here, I love. Look how beautiful this is, the backside especially, like the antique look. It's really thick, but these are actual, authentic, legit, antique French tiles. So these are from Clay Tile, and the thing about these is they're really, really expensive. I believe to do the flooring with this tile is $46 a square foot, which is on the higher end, I believe. Again, I don't really know what a good price for flooring is because I've never bought it before. So I just don't really know a lot of this stuff. If you guys have any tile resources for flooring that's more terracotta-y, I'd love to know. I actually did some Google searching to see if I could find any places that had authentic terracotta tile from like the 20s, 30s. I can't find any salvage tile, which kind of sucks. So if any of you guys know of anything, totally let me know. And something else to kind of mention, I'm in the breakfast nook right now, is that the tile that we use on the flooring is gonna go into the kitchen it's also gonna go into the laundry room and I believe into Marie's bathroom I could separate it I could like separate it here if I wanted to and do a different tile throughout here um, and do a different tile down the stairs if I wanted to but I'm not sure so we do have a large surface area to cover with whatever floor tile because this floor tile is not the vibe we also have our stone from the stone yard. I got a couple of samples while I was there, which was great. And the one that I'm leaning towards is the Calcutta Viola. I will say that I liked the Calcutta Monet with like the green veining and the brown veining a lot more. But what I'm gonna do is when I go back to select the countertops, which I'm gonna do very, very soon, you guys, I wanna know your thoughts on which countertops you like for here. I'm going to be designing this kitchen really around the countertops because it's gonna take up such a large area in the kitchen. I'm gonna have it go up the walls a little bit as well. So I'm thinking the counters are on the countertop and I also want them to go up maybe just like a little or right underneath. I'm not too sure, but I feel like if you go and you do like Calcutta Viola, you need it up the backsplash a little bit or like that chunky marble to get that really grand look. I want to pull it up the backsplash just a bit and then maybe do like a decorative tile on top. And then on top of that, I want to do one of these tiles. These tiles here are Zellige tiles and they have a high gloss to them, but they are handmade and they're made of clay. So these ones are from clay tile. I was thinking of doing like some form of checkerboard of this, maybe in like one of the bathrooms or something and keeping it really moody. So I think once I actually have the slab selected and I have an idea for the colors, I'll then go in and take some of these tiles and figure out which one looks best. So by what I mean in a border tile is the Calcutta marble might stop right about here for the backsplash and then on top I might do like a stacked interesting border right on top and then do more of a simple tile all the way up the wall. I also really like this tile a lot. This is the um label for it if you guys want to find it online. It's the Clay Brick Clay Guild New California in Bracken and it's like this olive green tile. I think it's beautiful. This would be great if I get a Calcutta Monet that has green in it and we can do like a stacked brick on top and then maybe even do like a sideways brick on top of that. I don't know, something just really interesting with pattern. So yeah, really for next steps, it's just deciding on the countertops, which I'd love to know which kind of marble you guys are leaning towards. I didn't share absolutely everything, so if you have any other options as well or things that you kind of like as well, definitely let me know. I'm leaning a little bit more towards the chunkier veined marble just because I feel like it's so beautiful and it's always been my dream to have marble like that in my home. So I think that that would be a really fun option to go with, but of course we want to find the perfect slab slash slabs. I feel like we're probably going to need two slabs. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and if you have any references or resources for anything I talked about today or any questions, comments, whatever it might be, totally leave them in the comment section below. I try to respond to as many of you guys as I can and, and we are just getting started. So make sure to subscribe to my channel if you are not subscribed. We are renovating this entire 1929 home. Of course, keeping all the original character and just updating the poor renovations that were already done. <laughs> I'll catch you guys in my next video, which is going to be this upcoming Thursday. Bye guys.